guys it's bd here and yes you read that title correctly yes i have stopped using customs and started using gaming keyboards again for gaming it's not clickbait and it's not cap i was actually having some issues gaming with customs that i recently made a tweet about which y'all said ain't no way boy and some of you had questions about why and then there were some of you who already knew where i was going with this decision now originally the keyboard that i went with was the razor huntsman mini i was planning a whole video around it shot a bunch of b-roll that proved my point and then while i was doing a little bit more research i came across a keyboard that would change everything and that keyboard is none other than the Wooting 60he now i'm going to be honest with you guys i've received Wooting keyboards in the past didn't get it didn't get the whole hype never made a video on it all the games that i played didn't use that analog switch or i just didn't really see it being enough of a benefit to make the switch now if you're unfamiliar with analog switches what they are in simple terms is however hard you're pressing or however far down the switch you go determines how fast your character will move similar to a joystick controller imagine the joystick being at rest in the middle as a top of the switch and the further down you go or you move down and the closer you get down to the bottom the faster your character will move in the game and this should give you some precise movement and speed now this is great for single player games but you know me i play a lot of first person shooter games so i don't really use that feature but this keyboard does have some other features that not only fix the issues that i was having with customs but it's taking it to a whole nother level so let's take a look at the booting 60 he and see what makes it so damn good that i stopped using my customs for games Gaming. On the surface, the keyboard looks like a generic OEM 60% keyboard. You might even pass it up just for that reason alone. Well, it's not because it has this cool little wrist strap that you can screw into the left side of the keyboard. At first, I didn't really get it, but it actually makes the keyboard stand out and actually quite like the look after some time. They also put some dampening foam in the bottom as well as some pro foam between the PCB and the plate to help with some of the sound. It's still not my favorite sound, but we're interested in the performance of this keyboard more than anything because let's be real, you're just going to be using this for gaming and you're gonna have your headset on while you're gaming you're not gonna be listening to that sweet sweet music that a normal custom would make now outside of that it has a pretty simple design no kickstand feed USB-C has this interesting lip near the front that slips down and it's actually pretty comfortable to type on. It's got RGB that you can control through the software and it's got all the modes that you could ever ask for. It has some Shine PBT keycaps, which feel pretty good, slightly on the rougher side. Right now, you might be thinking, BT, you gotta be kidding me, right? You can't trade out your $1,000 customs for this keyboard. It's definitely not for the aesthetics, guys. Let me tell you that right now. It's what's on the inside that really makes this keyboard special. And that's these Gatoron Lecker switches. Hopefully I'm saying that right. They are a contactless magnetic switch powered by some Hall effect sensors, meaning there's no metal leaf to create more friction. You can also swap these out if they ever do fail. On paper, they seem like they're a progressive switch. They start out at a 40 gram weight and then move down to a 60 gram force. Although it states that it almost just feels like 40 grams all the way through. It doesn't feel like a true progressive switch. Now these are not the smoothest switches out. These are not the best sounding switches out, nor do they have the best stabilizers, which are still decent, but they still have a slight rattle to them but this is war baby this is gaming we don't have time for smooth switches and loop stabilizers we got to get down and dirty in the trenches but i'll drop a sound test just to appease the masses all right let's drop it So a little background on my problem so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. The game that I play is Valorant. In Valorant, there's something called counter strafing. This is also in CSGO. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with this, essentially what that means is you'll be strafing to one side holding A or D. And then when you come around a corner or you see an enemy, you can come to a complete stop by tapping the other direction. So let's say you're holding A, then you tap D and you'll be at a complete stop making you completely accurate. If you're not at a complete stop, your bullets will go flying all over the place no matter how good your crosshair placement was whether it was on your opponent or not it's gonna fly off to the side 
that is the mechanic of Valorant in CSGO. You can't run and gun. What I was noticing with my customs is since the switches are on the heavier side, the action points are two millimeters or below, I would oftentimes be inaccurate. When I was trying to counter strafe or come to a complete stop, the animation would still be going or the person would just kill me because my counter strafe was so delayed. So one day I got fed up with dying. I had lost my last duel. So I went and I just grabbed my Razor Huntsman Mini, hadn't used it in a while. Lo and behold, my problem was seemingly fixed instantly. It has a higher actuation point of 1.2 millimeters and the switches are pretty damn light. And they have optical switches, so I was getting no delay. It's coming to a complete stop more often and definitely hitting more of my first bullet. So from there, I did some research and it makes sense. For a key to be fully released, it has to come back up past the initial actuation point to keep the unwanted movement from happening. My keystrokes then became faster, but now I had the issue of coming back up to a higher actuation point so that my key keyboard stops registering movement. So it still wasn't 100% perfect, but hey, I was gonna take it. But that's when I came across this very keyboard, the Wooting 60HE video, which explained what I was going through, which I'll link down below because it's a great demonstration of this. But in this video, they just show the difference in full stop animation when using the Wooting keyboard because not only are these Gatoron Laker switches analog, but you can also choose the actuation point of the switches ranging from 0.1 to four millimeters. It's insanity. So you can get even quicker reaction times with this keyboard. But Wooting has taken it a step further. Now you can enable something called Rapid Trigger, which fixes the Razor Huntsman's problem of having to come up all the way up to the top of the switch again. Now with the Rapid Trigger, no matter where I'm at on the switch, the switch will now recognize when I'm releasing the key and cut transmission of the key, making me come to a complete stop. No matter where I am on the switch, let me repeat that, no matter where I am on the switch, it will reset. I could be at the bottom, I could be at four, I could be at three millimeters, and it will reset as soon as I start letting go of that key. This is hacks. It's literally improved my aim tremendously in Valorant. I can outstrafe people in a gunfight and come to a complete stop, or in long range fights, I can hit my shot easier because I'll be more accurate than that person I'm going up against because, hey, my movement stops registering faster than theirs. Honestly, if you're a CSGO player or a Valorant player, just go out and buy this right now. It's worth it. I demonstrated this with the Space 65 with my Holy Pandas versus the Wooting 60HE with the key ripple effect. So you can see when I'm counter strafing. And as you see, my strafe shooting when going back and forth, just isn't as accurate on the Space 65. I often think movement gets underplayed in gaming and we overvalue flick aiming. A lot of these smooth tracking aim clips you see are like 70% keyboard and 30% mouse aim. If you try to flip it, your aim will be really shaky and you won't be as accurate. So it's not just CSGO and Valorant, but this could be a game changer for outstrafing opponents in Apex and Call of Duty as well. Truly, movement is super important. Having something that's going to react one-to-one with your brain is key. Now in the software, you can change the amount that you want to lift up the key before the rapid trigger feature resets. I like to have mine at about 0.1 millimeter for Valorant, the actuation point at one millimeter for the release. And it gives me a little bit of wiggle room so I won't accidentally press stuff. I found when I had it at 0.1, I was accidentally tapping a lot of buttons on accident and fat fingering a lot. So one millimeter is a nice sweet spot. You can configure this however you want or whatever you feel like is best for you. And that's the beauty of this keyboard is that you can choose the actuation point no matter where you are on the switch and the reset so crazy crazy custom it's almost like a i mean i guess it's a custom this thing is customizable it's you can customize each switch as well wooting also has some other settings high chan or taikan mode to prioritize performance which i think is worth getting on as it gets to delay to around one millisecond or less i didn't notice a huge difference but if we want the best of the best performance why not now all these settings including the rapid trigger can be saved on board and taken wherever you want to go so don't worry about you know going to an event or a tournament and not having your software there it's all on board which is nice hell you can even delete delete the software once you're done. So yes, I have stopped using customs for gaming and switched over full time to a gaming keyboard. And I think you should too. Now you don't need to have the smoothest switches in this keyboard because hey, we already have them in our custom. We don't have to have a colorful keycap set on this because hey, we have it on our custom. You know, we don't have to have the latest V3 stabilizers because you guessed it. 
we already have that. <laughs> so most of the time when I'm browsing on the internet or just typing up stuff or doing outlines for videos, I'm on my customs. But when I'm gaming, I just switch over. And since the keyboard does have a detachable USB-C cable, you can just swap your keyboards out instantly. So I always have at least two keyboards on my desk or somewhere around where I can just swap it out easily. So I know the price of the keyboard is a little chunky at $175, but you know me, I call it like it is. This keyboard will make improvements to your game. I've seen it firsthand and it will make you a better player over game and your movement overall just better. So go out, go buy this. It's on pre-order right now. I don't know when they ship, but hopefully it's not too long from now. I'm actually really excited about this product. I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. That's why I just scrapped the whole other video just so I could put this out and focus just on this keyboard because I think it is worth your guys' time. All right, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.